In this video, let us see how to make restaurant quality tandoori roti in just three simple steps that do without using an oven, without using a tandoor and also without using yeast. So let's get started. To a wide mouth bowl, start by adding the whole wheat flour followed by sugar, salt, baking powder and baking soda. Mix it. If you are watching one of our videos for the very first time, I would love if you could consider subscribing and also hit the bell notification as I post new videos on baking and desserts every single week. Next in goes the ghee that is clarified butter. This makes the bread flaky. In place of ghee, you can also use oil or butter. Mix that as well and then make a well and add yogurt which keeps the bread soft. Finally, add little water at a time and knead it into a dough. It would seem sticky to begin with. Note how the dough is sticking to my fingers at this stage. But keep kneading. Do not add additional flour at this stage. Now I was finding it difficult to knead the dough in the bowl. So I transferred it to my worktop and finished off the kneading process for another 5 minutes. What you are looking for is a smooth and supple yet stiff dough. And your hands would also be clean by this time. So unlike a regular bread dough, you do not have to knead it for long. Just 5 minutes is enough as you want a stiffer dough comparatively. Once kneaded, place it in the same bowl, apply some ghee on top, the leftover from the bowl is also fine, I mean that much is also fine, so that the dough doesn't dry out. Again, you can use oil or butter also here. Tea towel and let it rest for 30 minutes. Now while that is resting, let us prepare a cushion. I'll tell you why you need this later in the video. So for now, lay a tea towel and place two more folded towels on it and tie a knot and set aside. Also, this is the time to chop up some coriander leaves and garlic cloves. We would also need nigella seeds and some melted butter. After 30 minutes, roll it into a log and divide evenly into 12 roundels. You can also weigh out each portion of around 60 grams if you prefer it that way. Then take out each roundel and start rolling it into a disc of 6 inches in diameter. Of course, you can eyeball and roll it too. But if you like to be precise, then roll it to even thickness of 6 inches. If you find that the dough is sticking way too much and you are not able to roll it, then just sprinkle a little amount of whole wheat flour and start rolling. Uh, do not add too much flour here because that would make your dough uh, dry and uh, it would also burn in the skillet. So it is good to add just little here. And if you end up adding too much, then simply dust off the excess flour before transferring it onto the uh, iron skillet. Now if you are making the plain version, just keep it as it is, do not add any add-ons. The rotis need to be thick here, so roll it like we do for a paratha and not a fulka. Let's keep this aside and let me show you how to make a garlic roti now. So the basic steps remain same. Take out the roundel and roll it into an even thickness of 6 inches in diameter. You do not want to roll it too thin or else it won't puff. Um, so roll it out and then we will apply in some butter, sprinkle in some nigella seeds, garlic cloves, coriander leaves. Press it out with using the rolling pin itself so that it doesn't fall out while we are cooking it, right? 
Oh, by the way, guys, I forgot to mention that this weekend I'll be hosting a live baking workshop on making Afghan biscuits. So if you all are interested, you can join it for free by clicking the link in the description box below or in the comment sections. I would love to have you guys come and join us in the Baking Bake Along series. Now lift the roti and just place it on the cushion. Apply some water on the other side so this would help us to stick it onto our iron skillet. Yes, make sure that you use iron skillet for this recipe. It won't work well on a non-stick tawa. Now the skillet also needs to be hot so may take care of that or else the rotis won't puff. So yes, two things. One, you have to roll it thick and second that the skillet is hot enough. So with the help of cushion, drop the rotis on the tawa and press it down gently so that it sticks to the skillet within few seconds you would observe small bubbles coming on top and after few bubbles just flip the skillet upside down so that the roti now cooks on the direct flame giving you the tandoori effect Turn your skillet every now and then for even browning on top. Don't be afraid to leave it a little longer if need be uh, to get that black blackening effect on top to resemble the tandoori cooking and know that is not burnt. This is another reason why we make smaller rotis so that it cooks evenly on the gas flame. So once you are satisfied with the color, tilt it again. Using a pair of tongs, remove it immediately and apply some butter on top. Um, wait. Actually smear a lot of butter because life is too short to think about calories, right? Now if you are making a plain roti, you can skip applying butter at this stage. Now as mentioned the cushion makes it easier to transfer the dough to the skillet. I tried to transfer it using hands with no success. That being said there are people who find it comfortable to do it this way. So I leave it up to you to decide as to what suits you. If something like this happens do not panic you can cook it in a similar way. It would get cooked just that it would take a little um, adjustments here and there to cook it properly. Tip is that after making two to three rotis sprinkle some water on top and quickly wipe off the debris that is sticking to the skillet. This serves a dual purpose. One it brings down the temperature of the skillet and two these debris collected at the base tends to stick to the rotis and burns the base quickly. So to avoid that clean your tawa every now and then and now coming to how to serve the rotis tandoori rotis are often served with a curry and a dal with some salad and pickle on the sides oftentimes as i end up shooting my rotis become cold and obviously i'm not going to eat it that way right so to reheat it simply dab some water on both sides of the roti by the way just look how beautifully it is cooked at the base too so just tap water place it on a microwave safe plate and microwave for 30 seconds to get a warm and fresh roti now the best way to enjoy indian dishes is to eat using your hands ayurveda also recommends that so tear apart a piece of roti get a handful of curry by dipping your fingers in it and yes do remember to lick the little bit sticking to your finger tastes heavenly have some pickle and some salad pure bliss I am enjoying my roti here with some mom made paneer butter masala literally finger licking good <laughs> And also do a favor to yourself by making mango lassi now that mangoes are in season. Or you can also have some buttermilk or soda instead. And always and always end your Indian meal with an Indian sweet. And what better than a gulab jamun? All gulab jamun lovers in the house do raise your hands in the comment section below.
If you have any leftover rotis, then here are some ideas that you can use to reuse them. One is an amazing leftover roti pizza. Another way to use it up is making a cake. Yes, this is made using leftover chapatis. You can easily use a roti instead too. Again, you can use it to make a roti noodles and of course some healthy roti laddus. All the details for the recipes is given in the description box below. Please have a look if you would like to. And pretty much that's it in this video. Thank you guys for sticking to it for this long. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do remember to join us on Instagram for the Bake Along series. And I'll see you soon in my next one. Until then, this is Sushma signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.